What is going on everyone? My name is Mikel, um, AI specialist, and I'm back with another video. This is gonna be a great one. OpenAI just released their all new agent kit, and I'm gonna be walking you through exactly what it is, the purpose of it, and how you can start using it today. That doesn't mean I'm gonna set up a, a full agent and customize it and do all of that in this one video, but I am gonna walk you through you know, the benefits of it and, and basically how you can get started with using it right away. Um, so first things first, it like I said, it's already been added to the OpenAI um, platform. So if you just come to the agent builder right here in the side tab and you press new workflow, you're already you know good to go. So obviously this is the start of the workflow. Um, let me move this just a little bit so you guys can see. This is the start of the workflow, right? Input var variables are going to be text, and obviously you can probably add. Now you can't add. Uh, yeah, I was gonna see if you can add image or, or anything else like that, but it doesn't look like you can, maybe you can. Um, but the biggest thing is that, yeah, input as text, and then you have your My Agent node. Now, this is where you're gonna configure your system prompt, um, choose your model. Well, if you press evaluate here, then you can add um, the different evaluations, evals. Uh, so with that being said, yeah, this is how you would configure your AI agent. It's similar to most platforms, still similar to OpenAI, uh, their, their assistant builder. So, you know, you kind of just put your system prompt in here, or you can use AI right here to build out your instructions or system prompt um, with AI, right? You can do file searches, guardrails. What this guardrail actually is, is you can basically have different guardrails for your AI agents. So PII detects and redacts personal, personally identified information, which is huge um, because you don't want to be exposing personal information to anybody. Um, moderation class classifies and blocks harmful content, hate, harassment, or sexual content, meaning that you don't have to set this up inside of your system prompt to you know tell your AI agent to watch for this or whatever the case is. Jailbreak detects prompt injection and jailbreak attempts to keep the model on task, accurate and safe. And then hallucination, most of you guys already know what that is, um, detects potential hallucination by, by, by validating string input against your knowledge source, which is actually huge because if you're familiar with OpenAI, it has a huge problem um, with basically lying to you and acting like it's telling you the complete truth, even though it's not. So, you know, you turn this on and it's going to stop that completely. And then continue on error, most of you guys already know know what that means. Um, so if else, you got while, user approval, human approval, basically, transform and set state, right? And then obviously you can add your tools, invoke a MCP server, right? Which you can connect your API tools to, and then you can add your custom MCP servers, or you can use OpenAI's internal MCP servers. So if I press this add button, like I said, you can, you can use these internal ones, Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive, and things like that. Or let's say you've built your own MCP server or you've built one with uh, N8N or something like that, you can connect your own MCP servers here. So like I said, this is really huge because obviously, you know, you have your AI agents that have tools, they have guardrails, um, search files and, and, and different things like that. So when I press publish, I'm actually going to get a workflow ID and I can also add a domain, right, to actually use to actually use chat kit, right? So, but with this workflow ID is essentially how you would um, embed that with this agent SDK into your application. Um, so that's it really. And the biggest thing is like with, with the assistant builder, you know, you, you've, had, you've had certain limitations and now these limitations, they're just being able to expand on that. So eventually you're gonna probably see more tools, more logic um, being added, more data trans, you know, transformation and stuff like that being added. Um, and core tools and things like that as time goes forward but as a base platform as something you know that's starting off i think this is very huge because instead of uh buying new subscriptions and different things like that or this ai agent builder or this ai agent builder and connecting mcp servers you can just now do it all inside the open ai platform which like i said is really huge um so if i was to you know configure that system prompt add an mcp server and then maybe that's all I want to do, right? So then we can end that workflow after that, um, after we add that MCP server, right? And like I said, you can also start with their own templates. OpenAI has provided us with templates that we can just press customer service. Let's say we want a customer service. So with this one, it's like, 
Okay, we can start. Jailbreak guardrail, did it pass or fail? If it failed, it's gonna end, right? Which is huge. And then you have a classification agent. So now we have three different agents here. Um, we have a return agent, retention agent, and information agent. All right, this is, this is essentially, the classification agent is gonna classify uh, the text. So classify the user's intent into one of the following categories. The condition is just conditioning and, you know, basically breaking it off into its, its different individual uh, paths. And then, you, like I said, you have your information agent, retention agent, and your return agent. Your return agent is going to ask for user approval, basically. Um, does this work for you? And it, then it's going to end after that. So this is, like I said, this is, this is pretty big, too. You know, they already have templates inside the platform that you can use for yourself. And then, you know, you can obviously customize them, add MCP connectors as you need, and do certain things and certain tasks. With that being said, and, a, and, a, and another thing is it's like, this classification agent, you can use this classification agent to classify to a server or to another, like I said, to another agent, and then you can add MCP servers onto this agent, right? If you needed to take on specific tasks, maybe book into your Google Calendar, send emails, or different things like that, which like I said, is, is, is very huge. Um, so overall, I do think like there's some things that they can improve on with the, the whole layout and stuff like that, adding a few more tools and logic sources and things like that but as a start as a whole I, I really think that this is a huge for the developers just the whole ai community as a whole it's it's really huge for us because you don't need all these different subscriptions anymore things like that you can now just build your applications native with it with open ai and even just being able to connect them to your applications now is is much easier right so with that being said if you want more in-depth tutorial on how you can actually build these agents from scratch and from start, right? And build your a complete, fully customizable agent. Um, just be sure to leave a like and subscribe on this video. Drop a comment if you like this video and go check out my other videos. Um, see you on the next one.